Hello and welcome back to PCS channel. Today I'd like to talk about a very useful and unique tool for managing PDF files. So let's pull up a PDF file here. Maybe let's see, this one's good. So we're going to be specifically talking about PDF gear is the name of this particular application. And one of the things that strikes you immediately when you look at it is that it's free. And so you figure, okay, if it's free, it's probably limited in terms of what it can do and what you can accomplish with it. But when you start looking at all the features it has, it actually is pretty compelling. So let's do a quick walkthrough and see what it can do and how it works. So when you pull it up at first, like I pulled up this document here, you can immediately see that it has a very minimalistic interface, yet it has all the features and options you want to be able to get to fairly easily. So that's one of the things that kind of struck me when I initially looked at it. And so up at the top here, top left corner, you've got usual icons for opening files, saving files, saving as, printing them, undoing and redoing the previous operation. Pretty straightforward. But again, it's very minimalistic, out of the way. You have it available to you, but at the same time, it doesn't get in your face. So I thought that was very nice. On the left side, you have ability to create bookmarks. So you can have certain portions of a PDF marks with the bookmarks so you can easily get to them later. Then you have a way to look at the thumbnails or short previews of individual pages. So you can jump to it directly by just clicking on it like that. So that's pretty handy. And there is several different options here. You can split PDF, you can extract pages, and we'll, we'll cover that shortly here. And you can also delete pages. So you can do some of the operations specifically on, on, the, on these particular pages here uh, directly from here. So let's go through the top interface. That's where the main options are. You have ability to either select the arrow, which allows you to simply click, point and click to do different operations like you usually do in any application. Or you can select the hand, which allows you to just simply drag the file by clicking and holding the uh, mouse button. You have ability to select different view zoom levels so you can make things as convenient for you as possible. And you can indicate a particular percentage. You can zoom in quite a bit, all the way up to 600% for those of us who are semi-blind. And you can always work at 100% so it looks like this. And you can just sell it, tell it to fill the page so it's much easier to read. And you can have these undo and redo and then plus minus just jumps, zooms in and out. So basically a couple of different easy ways to jump between different settings here. You have different ways to create the zoom level because you work on a document, you want to be able to see it in the best light you can possibly see it. And they give you many different tools here to be able to do just that. Because uh, if you think about it, when you work on PDF files, you want to be able to see what you're working on. So the, the main area that you have, whatever, 90, 95% of the actual display here is nothing but the document itself. So you have really convenient way to be able to work on it. But in terms of options available, they're all there at the top, eating very little of the screen real estate, and yet available to do what you want to do. So you can look at the document uh, as a single pane. You can look at it in double pane mode. You can see we can look at the document two pages at a time, which could be helpful. Then you have ability to do a slideshow where basically each page comes up one at a time, and then you can click on the button to have it go to the next slide. And like a slideshow uh, you would normally do, you can use OCR capability here to convert it to text. And you have ability to take a screenshot of any part of the document of the page, and you're able to find things uh, by typing in the piece of text. Those are definitely very nice to have, but the real power comes in this next menu, which is annotate. And that's where you're able to go in and do all kinds of stuff to this document. For example, you create highlights, where if you take a particular piece of the document, say like this, and then you let go, it becomes highlighted. So if you have certain parts you need to highlight, you can just go like that. Next thing you have is underline. You click on that and you select whatever piece you want underlined and it becomes underlined. 
So these are all ways how you can annotate PDF files to make it much, much more useful and usable by people you're sharing it with. You're able to do strike throughs that you can imagine. You select this. Let's say you select a piece and it becomes strike. Um, you can do area highlights where you can select a box like that. And then it highlights the entire box as opposed to just the text within it. So that could be handy. Uh, you can draw lines wherever you want them to be. You can draw rectangles. Basically, various kind of graphical shapes that you normally use in a graphical program, you can also put in your PDF files. You can have regular freeform ink where you just basically scribble whatever you want to scribble, wherever you want to scribble. You can have text boxes. So if I put in a text box here, I can type in something in there and it becomes basically a text box that can be resized, can be moved like that. So that's useful. I can also add text by just clicking and start it, start typing. So that's how regular text works. And again, all of these are sizable and all of these can be easily moved to wherever you want them to be. So very handy. You can also add notes. For example, this is note one. And so now we have a note one up here. And you, if I click out of it, you can still see it's there, but I can actually close this little window. The box remains here for the note, but the note is invisible. If I put another note here, let's say, click on note, click on here, I'll type in note two, and let's move this uh, up here myself out of the way so you can actually see it. There we go. So you can see right there, there is no two. If you close these windows, and typically I recommend having these nodes be physically located maybe in the margins like that. So that way what happens is if you actually click, hover over the note, you can see what the note is. But if you click on it, I'm sorry, if you double click on it, then it opens a little window to go with it. And you can see your note there. And it, rem it remembers its location, things like that. So you could actually have nodes be on the right side here so they don't interfere with text and you can just double click on it to see it you can have open you can have closed it's a nice way to add nodes to go with your document and then you have stamps typical stamps you can have a number of presets like for example you can have uh, this is a draft document so we can put draft in here for example you can select maybe confidential and drop it here up at the top here and you can make it bigger by adjusting these things like that. And you can have as many of these as you want in terms of stamps. And you can also create your own stamp, custom stamps with your own message. And of course, when you get done with all the annotations where you can hardly read the document anymore, then you can easily just click on hide annotations and all these annotations are gone and you can show them back again. You can easily move them, you can easily delete them, you can change them, and you can basically add just about anything you want to this particular document with ease using this annotate menu. The next menu is edit, and uh, some of these things overlap, and you can edit text uh, from this menu. Uh, actually, let's get rid of the annotations for now so it's easier to see. So if we go to the edit menu, for example, edit text, if I wanted to edit text, I could just click here and the cursor, wherever, let's say, get rid of this letter S. At the end here, you can just click wherever you want, change it to whatever you want to change it to. So that's physically editing text. Editing objects allows you to go even further. You can change fonts. You can change some of the layout. It works on a bigger level than just changing text. And you can change text and stuff. Then you can also add text from here. So that's similar to the other page. So if you want to add text here, you can uh, add a new text to this particular document. You can add images. So if I wanted to add an image, for example, I could drop an image and drop it in here. And now we have an image in this document. You can also make things be linkable. You can also add watermarks. So watermarks, you can add your own watermark. Let's say we wanted to create a watermark that says classified. Yeah, you can select different selections here, but basically just create it. And now we have classified right there. And if you wanted to have it on additional pages, You'd have to add those separately. 
Uh, you can also manipulate headers and footers, page numbers. You can have uh, stamps from here, similar to the other place. And you can also insert signatures where you can do your own by default right there, or you can create a signature by adding a picture or typing or writing. And they have a number of options here to be able to do a signature. So if I want to say, take my signature, I can just click, drag it where I want it, and then say flatten it, and that's it. And now I have my signature in place. Maybe can, I can make it look however I want. So that's very useful for editing various documents with some stamps and signatures, so on. Sometimes you deal with forms. So this thing handles forms too with this form menu. You can add easily text images similar to the previous menu we just looked at, but you can also use things like the check access, filled, unfilled, things like that, that usually people use in filling out forms. So that's what these things are for. And then you can manipulate pages. You have all kinds of options here. So this document here is, looks like it's got what, 16 different pages. You can extract certain pages and you can select all pages, some of the pages, and you can select even only, odd only. So basically you have a bunch of selection in terms of how you can extract every page into a separate PDF. Very easy way to do all kinds of extractions from selected pages or all the pages. You can also delete pages. So if I select a few pages by just simply clicking on them like that, selecting the checkboxes here, then I can click on delete pages and it'll tell me, do you want to delete three pages? And I can just click okay and it'll be gone. You have a very easy way to manipulate pages and PDFs. You can insert pages and you can insert blank page, PDF, Word document, or from an image. You can also crop pages to make them smaller. If you got some extra area, a lot of times that you don't want to have, you can easily crop it. And you can also rotate pages. So a lot of times we scan or get documents from others that are scanned sideways and we need them to be the right side up. You can easily rotate it. So very convenient, very useful. Under the tools menu, you are able to convert this PDF to any of these formats. You can convert PDF to Word, to Excel, to PowerPoint, to PNG graphic file, to JPEG graphic file, to a text document, to HTML, so it's like a web page, to RTF, which is rich text format, or to XML. So you got tremendous amount of capability in terms of being able to convert PDF to any of these formats. And then if you look below the line here, you have ability to go from any of these formats and convert them to PDF. You can pull up a Word document, make a PDF out of it, Excel document, make a PDF, image, PowerPoint, RTF, and text. So all these formats can be used to create PDFs from them, and you can create all these different formats out of the existing PDF. Incredibly powerful, incredibly useful. You can also compress PDF. If uh, it was saved in uncompressed form, you can make it smaller in terms of disk size. Sometimes it's important if you have really large PDFs so you have a lot of PDFs. You can merge PDFs or split PDF. For example, let's say you have multiple files that you were sent and you want to put them together into a single PDF, you would use the merge PDF option. Or vice versa, let's say you have a file that has a bunch of PDF files in it, you almost split it into others to so use the split PDF option. Again, you can add signatures here. And another option you have here is to be able to actually password protect this particular PDF. And then later on, if you want, you can remove it. So this is a way to add security to PDF files that were not secured before. And then you have the help up menu that basically just looks for updates and settings, things like that. So basically that's an overview of PDF gear. Again, the program is free. You can get it at the pdfgear.com, download it on your computer, install it and use it. It's really capable in terms of all these features I just mentioned, but that's not even everything. Another thing you have is you have these little icons here. This is the same as we just looked at to convert to various formats, but down below it's got a little chat capability. And what that does, if you start chat, then it'll start something like a little chat bot. And it allows you to talk to the document as chat GPT, for example. So let's say we say, who is Oleg? Okay. So it doesn't know who I am because it's not in this document. How about what is PCS? Let's ask you what PCS is. And so here it says PCS stands for Productive Computer Systems. It's an internet IT and AI consulting development. So basically it found that information 
And at the bottom here, it shows you which pages it, there are references to PDFs. So you can just click, click on them and it will take you right to that particular page where it talks about it, but it gives you all the information it was able to gather from here. Okay. How about what kind of talent does PCS track? One of the little annoying things about it is you actually have to hit the send. You can just hit enter. So it says there's no direct answer to this question on the provided pages or PCS prices. So offering a wide range of IT expertise and so on. So basically it finds whatever it can find. It's not as good as chat GPT. So don't think it is, but it's fairly decent. If you're trying to do a little chat and ask it about some things in, in the particular PDF, it'll actually f does a pretty good job with that. So not exceptional, but it's pretty good. Certainly better than most other PDF applications that don't even have this capability. Definitely use chat if you can, and if you want to, and uh, to talk to this particular PDF document. And then to obtain PDF gear, you simply need to jump to pdfgear.com website right here, and that'll take you to this page. And over here you have free download. You can see they have the Windows version, they have the Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Too bad they don't have Linux, but they have pretty much everything else. And you can see it's just pretty PDF software for everything. And so the question that a lot of people would ask then is, okay, why would I spend money to buy something like uh, Adobe Acrobat when I have something like this? And the real answer, the simple answer is you shouldn't be spending money on Adobe Acrobat. Does Adobe Acrobat have any features that are beyond this? The answer is probably yes. You might have some additional things that, you know, because they're the de facto standard, they invented the whole PDF concept. But at the same time, if you look at features that you would actually use, and to me personally, it's, I want to be able to pull up a PDF. I want to be able to easily convert it, for example, to, if it's a graphical file, to text so I can manipulate it. I want to be able to annotate it by adding graphics, by adding text, things like that, which this allows me to do. I want to be able to potentially output it in a different format, such as maybe PowerPoint, and this allows me to do that. And at the same time, I want to be able to utilize it as the default PDF manager. Sometimes I want to split PDF into files. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I want to merge it. So all these basic things that I always use and always do are available in PDF gear. So with that being the case, I highly recommend using it. Obviously, it's a free application, so there's no risk for you. You can download it and try it. And if for whatever reason you don't like it, obviously, you don't have to use it. But I've been using it for a while now, and I think it's pretty solid, and I definitely recommend it. So if you're looking for some tool to help you deal with PDF files on a continuous basis with having many capabilities and abilities, this is the program for you. With that said, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I think last time I said my name was Oleg, it still is. Till next time.